Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in this lecture we will be studying about the radio resource management. Since the evolution of the wireless communication systems have increased, the amount of services have also increased. So the main work of the radio resource management is to provide the resources for these competing applications. Radio resource management is basically a system level management for co-channel interference, radio resources and other radio transmission parameters. Radio resource management is basically providing us the strategy and the algorithms for controlling certain parameters. These parameters are transmit power, user allocation, beam forming, data, handover, error control techniques and modulation schemes. So the basic idea for the radio resource management is to fully utilize the available spectrum. So why RRM is considered important? The reason is the radio resource management supports various services that are required to support by the wireless network. The next point is it improves the capacity of the system. Radio resource management also plans the coverage area. Radio resource management has a complex task of using the entire radio resource that are available for multiple users. So, multiplexing and putting many users into the bandwidth limited spectrum is extremely important. There are basically two types of radio resource management. The very first one is called as a static radio resource management and the other one is called as a dynamic radio resource management. Static management provides us with the parameters that are previously fixed. For example, the amount of cells that we have the channels that are available or the modulation schemes. The dynamic radio resource management provides us with dynamic parameters that are constantly changing. For example, transmit power. Transmit power is constantly changing as a user is moving from one place to another place. Frequency allocations. Anytime, any point a user can initiate a call, hence frequency allocation is required. So there are certain parameters which are constantly changing with respect to time and all these parameters come under the dynamic radio resource management parameters. In order to satisfy the quality of the service, the user that is transmitting the data, in order to satisfy the end user quality of the transmission, that is the data that has been transmitted from transmitter to receiver, certain quality of service parameters have to be satisfied. And what are these quality of parameters? Let us see. The first parameter is the required throughput. The second parameter is a maximum acceptable delay. Next parameter is a maximum acceptable delay jitter. And the last parameter is a maximum acceptable bit error rate. The first parameter that is a required throughput actually means the amount of data that has been transmitted is going or received by the receiver equally. The next that is a maximum acceptable delay that is a delay between the transmitted data and the received data should be minimum possible. Next is a maximum acceptable delay jitter. Jitter basically means the variation in the delay. Even if we are having delay, there is variation in that delay. Some delays are larger whereas some delays are smaller. So this should not be there. Ideally, the maximum acceptable delay should be minimum as possible. The jitter should be same or the delay should be equal. And finally, we have the maximum acceptable bit error rate. The bit error rate should be minimum as possible. There are certain other quality of service requirements. According to the user's point of view, there are certain other quality of service requirements. The quality of service requirements by the user is the end user only cares about the degree of the quality of service and he does not care about how this quality of service has been provided. Next, the perceived quality of service from the user's point of view is only going to matter. The number of user defined or user control parameters should be as minimum as possible. The quality of service from the application point of view should be simple. And last, there should be end to end quality of service that should be available. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.